Welcome to get Heavy Cardboard Game Day, y'all, where we play, talk, and teach medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx, and, well, thinky filler, as we have been all weekend, right? Today, we're playing 13 Days, the Cuban Missile Crisis, designed by friends of the show, Oscar Grenelude and Daniel Peterson, published by Ultra Pro and Jolly Roger Games. Today, gotta be honest, it's a personal grudge match between myself, Edward, and my co-host and wife, Amanda. <laughs> I'm 0-4 against her. That changes today. That will change today. So I will be playing uh, the United States. I mean, I am a Marine, after all. And I am USSR. Comrade. Comrade. <laughs> all right. So if you guys... Uh, uh, Paul says go Amanda. I disagree with that, but we'll, <laughs> we'll let that slide. So I'm going to read the little intro and then we'll get to teaching this. So as Pre President Kennedy and Premier Khrushchev, you control one of the superpowers during the tense days of the Cuban Missile Crisis. You win 13 days by emerging from the crisis with the most prestige or having not blown up the world. During the game, you earn prestige by dominating the nine different battlegrounds around the globe and dominating the political, military, and world opinion areas. Each round, you select a hidden agenda that will award prestige to the dominating player. So be careful not to reveal your true agenda too soon while you try to outwit your opponent. Players take turns playing strategy cards to place or remove influence cubes, striving to gain majorities across the game board. The tricky part, and 0-4, mind you, if you push too far, you risk losing the game by triggering global nuclear war. What will history remember you as? Hero? Villain or coward. All right, so 13 days. Uh, it's a card-driven uh, war game. It, it, it really is Twilight Struggle, the filler game. Mm -hmm. it, it totally, totally is. Yep. Uh, this came out a year ago, I believe it is, a year and a half ago, thereabouts. And got to say, one of our favorite thinky fillers that have come out in a while. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we're excited for this. All right, so on the turn, and the easiest way that I know how to teach is to just go through how the round works. So first things first, and we'll actually do this for the first round. So increase the DEF contract. So everything moves up. Obviously, uh, Mother Russia, uh, Soviet Union, is going to be red. I am uh, blue. All right. Then we're going to draw three agenda cards. So agenda cards are kind of the the objectives of the round. They will be scored for both sides. So even if you, if I, the U.S., uh, do not fulfill my agenda, but Amanda does, Amanda is going to score for it. And this up here is going to be the prestige track, which is how you win the game. Whoever ends up with more prestige uh, by the end of the game will win. Unless one of us causes nuclear war. Mm -hmm. So let me explain how nuclear war happens. If at the end of a round, any marker is up here in the DEFCON 1, meaning one of the two last steps up here, nuclear war, you lose. If all of your markers are at DEFCON 2, meaning where you see the nuclear symbols or higher between the three tracks, the military, the political, or the world opinion tracks, which correspond with the different areas on the board. If all of your markers are up here in DEFCON 2 or DEFCON 1, you also cause nuclear war and lose. So that's how you lose the game. How you win the game is having more prestige than the other side by the end of the game. We're going to play over the course of three rounds. Uh, it, it's mechanically quite simple. Uh, the Soviets start with one Influence cube here in Berlin in the military uh, track or uh, in the military area. And they also start on the military version of Cuba. There also is a political one on Cuba. And you can see that the symbols for the orange also have the little bomb, which mm -hmm. correspond again with the orange and the little bomb. The uh, political here in Turkey, Italy, and Cuba correspond with that track. And the three world opinions, purple and the microphones, correspond to that track. So as I said uh, at the beginning, step one is going to be increase the DEF contract. Step two is we're going to draw three agendas. So go ahead, deal those out, Amanda. Okay. One. Two. Three. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Six. 
All right, good job. All right, so what's going to happen now is first things first, everybody, ha each player has three flags. They're going to mark, and you have to be honest on this, what three areas you drew. So actually, you can show your opponent what these are because this is what you're essentially doing here and the political track and the personal letter. All right, so what that means and what you're showing your opponent here is, in fact, both of us are on this, mm -hmm. is what three cards you have as a goal. So those are going to stay out. So for the personal letter is keep the personal letter. Cuba is whoever has, you, you want to have the more, uh, more cubes or more influence in each of these areas. So for me, I have Cuba, so I want more cubes here than Amanda. Uh, the personal letter, I want to hold the personal letter. And for this track, meaning you want to push the envelope further up this track, uh, both of us actually have that. So we're going to select one of these. So for instance, those are my three, which you can also see on the board. Uh, we're going to select one of these tuck it under our agenda, and when we get to resolve agenda, we will then resolve the agendas. And score, uh, regardless of who has it, it will get scored. So for me, uh, hmm. I am going to choose this one. Now, Amanda doesn't know which one I'm choosing there. The other two will go back to the bottom of the deck. And we know that Amanda, either Turkey, the political or the world opinion, all right? So those will be scored at the end of the round. So the next thing, five strategy cards and initiative. So Amanda's going to deal out five cards each to us. All right, so now what's going to happen is we're going to take turns playing, and to show you guys, there are three different types of cards. There are Soviet card, event cards, there are NATO cards, and there are uh, U.S. cards. So what those mean is, and I'll actually show them this way. I'll lean forward a little bit. What that means is some of these are going to be more beneficial to your opponent than to you, just like in Twilight Struggle, and you want to try and mitigate uh, the, the negative cards for you and the positive cards. We are going to play four of these going uh, alternating. Uh, whoever has the most prestige will get, oh, whoever has the least prestige, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, whoever has the least prestige will choose who goes first. If tied, Mother Russia yes. gets to choose. So Amanda's going to choose, and we're going to play these cards for one of two things. We're either going to play it for the command value. Command value is basically, uh, if you're familiar with other card-driven war games or, or such, the command value, uh, like the uh, command points right. or so on and so forth, those are represented by the cubes on the side of the card. If it is an opponent's card, then you can only play it for the command value. The command value says how many cubes you may place or remove from one of the nine battlegrounds that are out on the board. When you place cubes, uh, the first one is free. There's no penalty. There's no anything. You're just going to literally place a cube out on the board. However, every cube you place past the, first, past the first one is going to affect the DEFCON marker. So if I placed two here in Cuba, and it, they all must be placed in the same battleground unless the, the card says otherwise, everyone past the first one that you place will increase the DEFCON marker for your side in that area. So for instance, if I place these two cubes here in Cuba, which is a political area, the first one is free, the second one would then add one to my DEF CON level in the political. Political is here in the green, so whoop, that would bump one as an example. You are allowed five maximum per any one battleground per side. So it could be five to five, potentially. Uh, but again, anytime you add more than one to a track, for every one past the first one, you raise that DEF CON marker. Now, on the flip side, if you play one that allows me to place, say, three, and I only place two, that's fine. Or I could remove cubes to lower my DEF CON in the exact same way. If I remove one, nothing happens. However, if I remove 
two, I then would decrease my political track for that area one step. If I remove three, I would drop it two, so on and so forth. And we're going to alternate doing this. So that's command value. You can play command value for any card that you have, whether it's for the US, NATO, or the Soviets. However, on the flip side, the other thing that you can do is you can play it for the event. If you play it, or if the card is for you, meaning America, or NATO, you can play it for the event. Both of us can. However, if it is for the other side, you cannot play it for the event. You can only play it for the command value. But there's a catch. What's that catch, you might ask? You must offer the card to your opponent first and say, would you like to play the event? And if they choose, they can. If they choose not to, they can choose not to. And then you execute your command value of the card. But it's always offered to the player to do uh, resolve the event before you play do the command value. So that's going to be the five strategy cards in initiative. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to, as I said, we're going to play four of the five. Then we're going to save one card for the aftermath. So what the aftermath is going to be is we're going to tuck one card here for the end of the game. If uh, it's for the Americans, the U.S., it's going to be good for me. If it's a Soviet card, it's going to be good for Amanda. If it's a, a NATO card, it's basically a bluff. Yes. We're going to count uh, at the end of the game. We're going to count the number of command cubes that are on each side and skipping the NATO cards. And then whoever wins the aftermath will get one prestige, which will help them at the end of the game. Then we will do the world opinion bonus. Whoever has the majority in these three uh, areas and we can resolve them in any order, it doesn't matter. Take the personal letter, awesome, and take two prestige. Plus or minus one on any one DEF CON track, and it's important to note, you can only ever move your color pieces. So for me, being blue, I can only move my DEF CON tracks, and it's only plus or minus one on one of the three tracks. The alliances, you get to add another aftermath card. So you draw the top card off the deck. If it helps you, you probably want to place it. If it doesn't, you probably want to discard it. However, if it's a bluff, you may want to, i.e. a NATO, you may want to place it anyways and get the opponent thinking, oh wow, they just added to that, so maybe I have to save a, a bigger command card to be able to place there. Then, resolve agendas. We will turn over the agendas, and we're going to resolve them one at a time, but understand that they they resolve simultaneously, so it's a net between the two for moving the prestige marker. Then, check for nuclear war, and this is usually how our games end, because I'm too aggressive. So what happens at that point is we look and see if anybody is in the uh, DEFCON 1 area. If they are, game's over. If all of their markers are in DEFCON 2 or higher, game's over. Then, uh, if that has not happened, we advance the track, rinse and repeat, do that three times, whoever has it at the end of the game wins. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Ma Amanda, any questions for you? Did I, did I miss anything? Um, I don't think so. I think I'm okay. Okay. Um, whenever you were using this in a, as an example, you put all the cubes back, but you do start with one in Cuba, right? Uh, uh, I do not. Actually, if you guys can see, and I think you guys can, do you see the two little faded stars in each of those areas? That's where the U.S. starts with one influence cube, and you can see the hammer and sickle. In those two areas, that's where the dirty Soviet. See, I feel bad, right? I don't. I'm. I'm trying to run jokes about that, but, but then it could be, yeah. oh, you're being political. Mm -hmm. Ah. So anyway, this Soviet is me start. And my there. funny hat. There you go. Right. Cool. Um. Yeah. So, go team America. Oh and four. We got this today. We got this. All right. So Amanda, it starts with you. Mm -hmm. What would you like to? Would you like to start, or would you like for me to start? I would like for you to start, please. All right. All right. So let's see. I need to actually go through my cards now that I'm done teaching. So let's see. You know what? I will actually start uh, with Missile Trade, which says it's Amanda's uh, event. 
So if you would like to read it. So she gets the option to do the event. Remove up to three USSR influence cubes in total from one or more battlegrounds. I choose not to. Oh, hey, yeah. see? And that's how you mitigate. I do this early so because she doesn't have a lot out here. All right, so I have... Oh, one other thing I did forget to mention. Anytime there is a DEFCON marker right here on the card, if the event happens, then whatever, again, past the first cube either placed or removed, will affect the DEF contract. If it does not have this, then whatever happens in the event, if the event is triggered, does not affect the DEF contract. Okay. Cool. So this is going to be command value, and I have to remember what I took. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I have three up to three command cubes I could choose to either place in one area or remove from one area and obviously I'm going to place and so let's see I'm already leading in this uh, on this track for this if I chose the political I already have the personal letter if I chose that and I don't have anything here in Cuba so actually what I will do is I will place all three here in Cuba to get Amanda thinking, she doesn't know now which of the three that I have. Now, a nice little benefit to doing this is I place three. So the first one is free, the next two, one, two, because I've placed more than one. So now, does she, she has no idea which of the three that I've chosen. Still have the personal letter. I'm doing well in Cuba, I'm up three nothing here, and I've raced out to a giant lead here on that. So, oh my, what do I have? Hmm. And the discards will just go out of play. <sighs> Let's see. If you guys have any questions at all, as you, you guys know the drill, feel free to, uh, feel free to ask, and uh, yeah, we'll be more than happy to to answer any questions, especially since there's going to be a little bit of downtime between each, you know, playing back and forth. Okay, I'm going to play a Soviet card. They have pigs. Play on opponent. So you are, are you playing it for the event or the I'm command? I'm playing it for the event. Okay. They either remove two influence cubes from the Alliance's battleground, or they can't play events to deflate their death contracts for this round. Oh, may I may I see it? Mm. They either remove two influence cubes from the alliance's battleground. That's Okay, well then, so you can't do that then, so you have to do the other. I'll buy that. Is that right? It's if, it's a little gray, but I'll buy that. Then I will. I can play another card. No, no, I'll, I'll buy. Oops, I will buy that. So here we go. So I will. I I will. Uh, uh, can't play events to deflate my def contract this round. So I can't lower my def con. All right, fine. So. Yeah, I would say because I can't choose this option, that I have to choose the other. I think I that's think fair. I think so, but um, we can ask. If if uh, Oscar if, or yeah. uh, or Daniel are watching. Yeah, or they can watch it later and let us know. There you go. Uh, okay, and I will play to the brink okay. on Amanda. It's a NATO card, so either of us could play this. Play on an opponent. All their command actions have minus one influence cube for this round to a minimum of one my one influence. Okay. Okay. Actually, let's scoot that up just a hair. There we go. And good morning to everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're watching from. Appreciate you all uh, being a part of this today. Thank you. And remember, one of these now will be saved for the aftermath, for the end of the game. Okay, I'm going to play this. It's a U.S. card, eyeball to eyeball. So you get to read it. And All right. You want to do so it. eyeball to eyeball. It does affect the def contract if I choose to do this. If U.S. is more escalated than the USSR on the military def contract, which I am not, place up to three influence cubes in total on one or both of the two Cuba battlegrounds. Obviously, I cannot do that. So Amanda, 
So that doesn't affect because it's two. Correct, because it's just one. one. So right. I will do just one. Let's go in here. All right. Um, all right, I'm going to play. Man. Yeah, I'm going to play a face saver uh, for the event. It does affect the def contract. Command three influence cubes, period. Then opponent may command one influence cube. So it's up to three. Um, so I will place two here in Turkey. So I place two, so therefore the political goes up. Yeah. You know what? Nope. I'm going to place two here in the world opinion instead. Which, two is more than one, so my track goes up one. Alright, and Amanda then can place one influence cube. Let's go to Turkey. I figured that was... Now, because of the fact that it's only one, doesn't affect the track. Go ahead. Hmm. Okay. Public protests, it's another America card. Okay. Remove any number of U.S. influence cubes from any one battleground. I feel no need to do so, so I elect not to. So because of the card that was played on me, I can only use two. A maximum of two, right. correct. Hmm. Okay, I don't like that you have that many more in Cuba than me. Alright, now because she placed two in Cuba, that means I go up. that goes up one. Alright. Um... All right, I'm going to save this card for the aftermath. So I'm going to play U2 Photographs, command three influence cubes onto one military background or battleground. I elect not to do that. Instead, I will just do the one, and I will place it here in Cuba. Done. All right. And for your final action of this round. Where's my... Oh, all this, all the aftermath goes over there. That's it right. does, right. Yeah. Well, hold on. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, mathematical precision. It's another U.S. card. Okay. Mathematical precision. It does affect the DEF contract. Escalate or deflate the U.S. political DEF contract by two steps, then command one influence cube. So I would argue I'm not playing the event. So you are. What do you think? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh... They cannot play events to deflate their DEF contract for this round. I would say I probably can't do what, this, What though. is the wording for whenever I give you an event? Is that, are you playing that event? Uh, you know, that's a good, that's a good question. So let's see here. Uh, when played in the, uh... I'm actually looking that up. That's actually a really good question. It's like can, may, must. Cards associated with the opponent's superpower can only be played for command, not the event. When you play your opponent's card for command, first hand the card over to your opponent. You may then choose to trigger yeah. the event That's, before you, you spend any influence. The opponent decides to trigger the event. So I would say this is triggering the event, mm -hmm. not playing. Ergo, I can do I this. Do. All right. Dang so. It. Escalate or deflate the U.S. political death contract by up to two steps. Oh. Personally, I think he should inflate it, but that's just me. All right. So I'm actually only going to go one. The reason I'm only going one is it's possible one of us may have that. So, and only one's in DEFCON 2. I don't mind that. Then I may... 
command one influence cube and oh why not let's just go ahead and handle that as well it is your honor ma'am to okay, finish so it now it's going to be two up to two command value okay Oh, I, yeah, Brian, I think this is actually an excellent entry into playing uh, CDGs or card-driven war games. I think this is a stellar example of that. And it helps kind of uh, take some of the, the fear of them off a little bit. And there are, we, I mean, we've already encountered two kind of edge cases uh, in this case, but one of which was clearly, uh, I, th I feel like, resolved. The other is still a little gray. But... Uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, those can be resolved in, with rules questions, but for the most part, fantastic. Yeah. All right, so now we have played uh, our strategy cards. We have saved one for the aftermath. So now we're not going to actually tuck them under because since they're sleeved, it kind of gets a little yeah. bulky after three rounds. So those are saved. Okay, world opinion bonus. All right, so we take a look. We can resolve these in any order. Uh, so nobody has played here. The television, ladies first, plus one, um, plus or minus one on any one DEF contract for the Soviets only. I'm going to look at my agenda again. I am going... I'm going to deflate my world opinion. Okay. Then we resolve. I already have the personal letter, uh, but that's going to be... Two for siege, right? Right. Two for having the personal letter. Uh, okay. What's next? Resolve agendas. All right. So we do these simultaneously, but... Go ahead. All right. So go ahead, Amanda. Read it. So what is it? It is world opinion. Death so, i.e., that track here. Escalate all DEFCON markers in the world opinion DEFCON 2 area by one step. No one is in area 2, so that doesn't happen. Okay. Then what? Uh, dominating player receives... Do so, i.e., me, right. because I'm ahead. Yeah. Okay. Receives equal prestige equal to difference in DEFCON steps plus 1. So, difference of 1, plus 1, 2. Now, technically, here, let's just... We know it's going to go to four, right, right now, but these happen simultaneously. So, Cuba political ground, uh, political battleground. The dominating player, I'm up five to three, receives prestige equal to the difference in the influence plus X. X is the connected battlegrounds, the Cuba military and the Atlantic. So all of these are connected. The player dominates. I dominate zero of these, so the difference here is going to be... Do you not dominate this? You have one not dominate? No, you do. Oh, You're right. I'm, I'm so used to playing the U.S. Dang it. All right. So I lead by two here. So that would be two more prestige plus two from Amanda. That's four. It pegs out to five. I don't want to talk about it. All right. So now these are discarded. And then what's next? Uh, check for nuclear war. We are not at nuclear war. Yay, world is safe. Okay. Then advance round marker. And we discard these as well. We do, because that was the end of the round. Okay. And now we start again. Okay. So what is it? Increased death contracts. All right, so now if you notice, as it is right now, and this is only when we check for nuclear war, we are both one track away from ending the game in a bad way. Yep. All right. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, Here we go. Here. All right. So we should have also pull our mm -hmm. markers back. So. Those are my three. Oh, Brian says, uh, so we'll see streams of Twilight Struggle 89 or Labyrinth soon? 
I wouldn't say soon, but you will see them, yes. As you know, and maybe it'll be you on here with me. Or you and Amanda. Or me and Amanda. Or me and Matt. You get the idea. All right. Uh... chosen my agenda, sir. All right. I will go ahead and choose that one. So those go back. Okay. Now we do the five strategy cards and okay. you select initiative since you're ahead of prestige, no, right? No, it's whoever's behind. So it is your honor. Oh, it's still me. Yep. Let me look at my cards first. Yeah, of course. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I will show the folks at home real quick. That is my hand. Hmm. I give initiative to you. All right. Yeah, I see no reason not to play this. I will start with the Guns of August. I will play it for the event. Escalate or deflate one of my death contracts by up to two steps, then command one influence cube. Excuse me while I back that down. <sighs> All right, and now one influence cube. Well, we'll go and start there since I have potentially one of those two as well as the military. So that's done. I'm going to play this UN card, SOPs. All my command actions have plus one influence cube for the round. Okay. Um... Oof. Wow. Hmm. All right. I will allow Amanda uh, her choice of national liberation. Command three influence cubes onto one political battleground. Now notice it does have the DEFCON marker on it, so it would affect the political track if she chooses to do more than one. And you get up to three in one political. Political being uh, the Cuba, Italy, or Turkey. The green ones. The yes. Green, the yeah. green backgrounded ones. <sighs> so is this making sense to those that have not played this before? And for those that have any thoughts so far? Yeah, we're definitely going to be doing Forge and Steel probably once we move the studio up uh, later on this week um, upstairs. I am only going to do one. Okay. So it does not affect the DEF contract. Then I get to place one command, or I'm sorry, one uh, use one command uh, point for an influence cube. And since we already got one here, we'll go ahead and throw one there. All right, done. Okay. Oh, this is this is what makes the game, mm -hmm. the DEF contract. Brian, Brian says the DEF contract's pretty cool. It's yep. brutal, man. It really is. That is how I've lost every single game. Uh, no, three of the four. Amanda beat me once uh, on Prestige, and three of the other four, I have nuked the world. So I apologize, world. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to play Berlin Blockade. It is an, a USSR card, but... I don't like the event, so I'm going to play it for the okay. command value. Okay. And I get one plus one influence cube, so I Which get three. Which is three, total. and it's one. Remember, it's one battleground, and it will affect yeah. the DEFCON track. Let's 
see. I am going to do... Um, Mira says, oh, go I ahead. I like you having this personal letter. Okay. Honestly. Okay. Interesting. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, what? Mira says, oh yeah. Mira says, I haven't played it yet, but I can see this getting more playtime than Twilight Struggle. It's, it's a 45 minute yeah. game. Uh, whereas Twilight Struggle can take the better part of a day. We love Twilight Struggle. Um, but yeah, this, this definitely can be more approachable for yeah. a lot of people. And that's kind of why we wanted to feature it today to, uh, both highlight a game that I feel like for the most part is flown under the radar. Mm -hmm. Uh, we actually did a trailer on it on the podcast, but also to encourage people to explore more of the CDGs that are out there. And I think this is the this is a great, a perfect yeah. jumping off spot. Yep. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and pull the Band-Aid off quickly and get it over with. YouTube downed. Oh, no. Um, place up to two influence cubes on the turkey battleground. Remove half of the U.S. influence cubes from one cubit battleground rounded up. All right, so it does not have the DEF CON marker on it, so Amanda could do this freely without having to worry about messing with her DEF CON tracks. Hmm. So read it again, Place up step by step. Place up to two influence cubes on the turkey battleground. Now, you might be asking yourself, so? why wouldn't she automatically do this? Well, you're piece limited by these cubes. And when you start running low, that then means when you play for command value, you need to pull cubes off to then be able to subsequently, in a future action, place them on there. It does help your DEF CON track, but it does kind of limit your options. So I'm not trying to sway Amanda no, yes. in this. I'm just trying to let you all know as to why it's not an obvious, oh yeah, throw yeah. more cubes out there and I get more influence. I five left. So she could play, it does say up to two. Correct. So I choose to... I choose to only do one. Okay. And so then remove half of the U.S. influence cubes from one Cuba battleground. It will be this one, obviously. So he gets three back. Now, again, doesn't have a DEF CON marker. Unfortunately, does not drop that for me. But the cool thing is I now get two influence, I'm sorry, two influence cubes into any one location. Um... So what I'm thinking right now is either Berlin or Atlantic. Um, I'll go ahead and put them in the Atlantic. Uh, so I place two. That means my military goes up one. There. Done. I have to figure out which card to play. Play. Give me a second. I'm going to do um, Wave and Smile. It is an American card. Oh, okay. Wave then and Smile. Remove up to two U.S. influence cubes in total from one or more battleground, then place them on other battlegrounds. Interesting. I will do this. Remove up to two from one or more and then place them onto other battlegrounds. So I, I kind of am free to do as I wish here. Um, we'll go ahead and place that one. Or move that one from Italy to Berlin. And I'll go ahead and take that one Oops, from Turkey down here into the Alliances, which is an extra Aftermath card. And now, Amanda, you may place up to three. Yep. Sorry, three. No, wait, we're Americans yep. today. Three. Uh, uh, <laughs> remove up to three. I'm sorry. Yeah, up to three in U.S. And, no, 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 no. That's the event. I right. get to do this. Right, which, because of your card, you get to do up to three. So, I'm only losing one. Uh, um. And it will affect her DEF CON track. And notice, if she moves, if she puts them onto the world opinion, she very well, she only has one more action to be able to lower than her DEF CON before she loses the game. Potentially. Um, I'm going to put... 
And what Amanda does on this turn is going to dictate which of these two cards I play next turn, uh, which will influence totally my play for my next play uh, card play. So this is going to be really interesting. Whoa. I am going to place just one in the Alliances Battleground. Oh, excellent. Uh, Paul says, uh, we played Bay of Pigs correctly. is confirmed on BGG by Osgar. Thanks. Awesome, man. Thanks for the follow-up. Thank you. What are other CDGs between Twilight Struggle and this? Brian, you're watching. Yep. I'll let you take that while we uh, while we go on here. I'm sorry, what'd you do? I placed one there. Arr, okay. Well, shoot. It's not what I wanted you to do. Um, Good. All right, we're going to play Invasion of Cuba. We will play it for the event. Escalate the military, the U.S. military death contract by two steps. One, two. If the game were to end right now, I would lose. Okay. However, it doesn't. No. You may then deflate another U.S. death contract by the same amount of steps. And I will de uh one, two. Ah, there we go. And this card is saved for the aftermath when we get there. Amanda, your honor. Okay. Uh, turn back the ships. Deflate the most escalated USSR death contract by up to two steps. If tied, I pick one. Okay, so one of other, obviously the military or the political, which at this point Amanda knows I have not chosen this for my agenda because I chose to back that one down as opposed to the world opinion. She may have. So if that's the case, then it probably behooves her to move the political one down. But we'll see. And my cards are done, so I have no influence on this anymore. Oh, hey, looky there. All right, what's the next step? Uh, the next step is to save one card for Aftermath. Okay, done. Those go in here. All okay. right. World Opinion bonus. All right, so it doesn't matter the order. So we'll go here, the UN. Uh, the Soviets take the personal letter, which is plus one command, and then you give it to your opponent if you wish. I just have not had a, a use for right. it. I actually was trying to use it this turn because once you did that, I was like, okay, I'm going to lose the personal letter anyways, mm -hmm. so I might as well, but it just didn't work out to where I could use the plus one because I didn't want to mess with my death contracts. Okay. All right, so take the personal letter, and she gets two prestige for that. Go ahead. There you go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Actually, for folks. Okay. All right. Then, so, uh, uh, that's yeah. the personal letter. Yep. Then, plus or minus on any one DEF contract for the Soviets. I will deflate that one. All right. And here, we are tied. Nothing happens. Okay. Hang on. Hanging. Oh, you chose to deflate yes. a different one. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So what's next after the uh, the world opinion bonus? Now we resolve agendas. All right. Go ahead. You first. Again, this is simultaneous, but we'll do it one at a time for the camera. So As what is it? It's military. Obviously. The so the military. So I guessed correctly that it was this one that she chose. Could have been the Cuba one, but. Escalate all DEF CON markers in the military DEF CON 2 area by one step. Okay. So. All military DEFCON markers? Mm hmm So only Amanda? Okay. okay. Dominating player receives prestige equal to difference in DEFCON steps plus one. One, two, three, plus one is four. Okay, so just remember that you're at four. I will be at four. Okay, so now I have Berlin. Berlin is up here. The dominating player prestige, uh, receives prestige equal to the difference in influence cubes plus one. I have one more. Mm -hmm. That's two. Four minus two is two. Whoop, whoop. There we go. Right. And that's the end of the well, end of the card play mm -hmm. action. That goes uh, those go out of play actually. Okay. Okay. Now we check for nuclear war. Nobody is there. We are all safely down here and nobody is up in DEFCON one. All right. And now we go to the last round. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> all right, so go ahead. Okay. Increase death contracts. Alright, now both Amanda and I are very, very close. 
to DEF CON 1 as well as entering all of ours into DEF CON 2. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Right. And this, what this simulates is the stress of how close things get to nuclear war and how you really got to push the envelope, but you got to know when to pull back yep. and so where, where to refrain. Now so we draw three agendas. Pull our flags back and place them out there. All right, so we have Turkey, gobble, gobble, gobble. We have Italy, and we have the personal letter. Which, if you don't have the personal letter, the only way to get the personal letter is one of two ways. Either through here on the World Opinion Bonus, or hope and pray the other player spends it. Can I look at the book for a second? You most certainly can, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, while she's doing that, let's see. Uh, yeah, Space Monkey says, hi all. There are so many CDGs, Washington's War, Wilderness War, Shifting Sands, um, uh, Hands in the Sea is another that has come out. And I'll be honest, uh, I have, we have just a, a ton. There's Kingdom of Heaven, Warriors of God, Shifting Sands. Um, there's just, there is a ton of uh, card-driven war games. And... I'm trying to think, are there, I guess Forged in Steel is the one that comes to mind that is a non-war game, more Euro style uh, game that, uh, more Euro style card driven game. Uh, Hannibal Rome vs. Carthage uh, is another and that's coming to Kickstarter next month from Phalanx Games actually. So let me All get right. back to deciding what to I'm just, doing. I have to just ask you. Okay, um, go ahead. I received two cards that are the exact same. Yeah, they both go on there. Okay, I didn't know. Yep. It doesn't say in the book, so. Okay, no, okay, so th this is a good teaching moment, actually. So Amanda has two of, well, it doesn't matter, because I know that you have one <laughs> Cuba, and she has two political. What that means is it's going to be harder for her to bluff what it is, because two-thirds of them are the same thing. Yep. So it's either this Cuba or two of there. Um... I am going to choose that one, so those two I am not, and those go back into, and actually I think we should be shuffling these each turn, between each turn oh. with the old ones, Whoops. so my bad, but not the end of the world. Okay, so now we do five strategy cards. Yep, and initiative, and Amanda keeps initiative because she is still trailing in prestige as the Soviets do. All right. My hand. Okay. 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 I am going to take initiative. Okay. It is your honor then, ma'am. I'm going to play this NATO card 50-50. The player as the event. Yes, as the okay. event. Okay. The right. player with the most influence cubes on the television battleground. That would be the Soviets. May escalate or deflate two of their death contracts by one step. Any mix. Okay. So any two down one. Correct. Okay. I'm gonna move down that one, the military one. And my guess is the world opinion, since. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to probably butcher the pronunciation. I apologize to our Russian friends or Soviet. Uh, Maskarovka? Maskarovka. All right. So, you want to read it? If USSR military death contract is in the death con 3 area... It is not. Place up to one influence cube on all military battlegrounds. Man, I'm, oh, I'm sorry for you. That's... Okay. Bummer. This is... I the can tell. Smallest just how, violin in yeah, the world playing his, My Heart Bleeds his for You. My heart is so broken right now, you guys. You All right. Understand. So, uh, two command value. Uh, we'll go ahead and start. Hmm. Wow, okay. Um, actually, 
we've tried to talk through our turns, but we really can't when it's just us. Right. So, we, so here, no, actually, <laughs> I no, I, I can't on this. So, okay. So I'm wanting to place uh, influence cubes onto either Turkey or Italy, since I have both of those marked um, as possible, because it's probably not the personal letter. It could be, but it's an uphill battle, whereas these could be easier. So I want to place cubes over here, but the problem is if I place multiple cubes and I'm allowed to place up to two, it's going to raise me up into DEFCON 1, which is, let's face it, a little scary. So instead, since I don't need to fight over Cuba right now, I'm actually going to remove both of those cubes from the political. Because I removed two, I'm going to actually drop that down one, and it gives me more uh, options throughout the rest of the game. All right, done. Oh, and High Treason is a card-driven war game. Absolutely, Paul. Excellent call. Good call there. Uh, and, oh, Carmen. Hey, how's it going? So Carmen is watching. Hi, Carmen. Uh, our, our very good friend and the owner of Game Surplus, one of the sponsors of our podcast. We the People, reprinted as, as Washington's War, is his was his CDG introduction, 1960. Uh, the Making of the President, Hannibal, Rome versus Carthage, Sword of Rome, Successors are some favorites. The first two are two player and the last two are four or five. Excellent call. Like I said, there are a ton of them out there. They just tend to be more war game uh, centric than otherwise. But as you guys could see, 1960, uh, obviously 13 days. Uh, 1989? Uh, nah, more political, kind of Twilight Struggle-ish. Okay. Um, yeah, there's just a ton of them out there. And from what I've heard, we're both big fans of them. That's why we own them. We just need to find the time to play them. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to play MRBMs and IRBMs. It's a uh, Soviet card. I'm going to play it for the event. Escalate or deflate the USSR military death contract by up to two steps. Then command one influence cube. Let's... <laughs> All right, uh, put me down two, please. Okay, one and two. Okay. And command one influence cube. All right. Anywhere she wants. It does affect the DEF COM, but it's only one, so it doesn't affect it. Right there. All right, cool. Ooh. Um... I will go ahead and offer you strategic balance, ma'am. Place up to three influence cubes on the Atlantic battleground. And does it it does affect the DEFCON mm -hmm. marker? She only has two, so it would actually only allow her to place two out there. No, you can go ahead and have it. Okay, so I get one command value. We will go ahead and place that there. Done. Two turns each left for the game, and we have not blown up the world yet. All right, I'm going to play Summit Meeting for the command value. Okay. I'm going to take back... Um... And she's only allowed to take up to the same amount of cubes, so would uh, drop her her DEFCON track on whatever she takes back, a maximum of one. The good news, Paul, is you can actually go back and watch our uh, playthrough of High Treason. There's only one other person that I know that does run-throughs, and it's not us. We do playthroughs. <laughs> our good buddy Rado, as I intimated. Oh, I'm sorry. What are are, are you having tough decisions? I'm gonna play, remove two from Cuba. All right. So she removed from the political, which means her political drops, which tells me this is probably what she's going for. So, with that said, I will go ahead and play. Man, this is brutal. Uh, I'm going to play Airstrike, but only for the command value. Uh, I 
I will place two in Cuba. So that raises my military up one. One card play left. Moscow is our brain. Uh-oh. For the event, place up to four influence cubes in total on battlegrounds where the USSR player currently has influence cubes. Max two per battleground. Okay, so it does affect the DEF contract. Note, but she was smart and I assume was building up for this. Well done, well done. Let's see. Well, she's going to place two in Cuba. We know that. <laughs> or at least I, I think I know that. Oh, hey, shocker. Okay, so military goes up one. And political goes up one. And political will go up one. Oh, and five, huh? Son of beach! God. All right. Um... All right, so if I do not do anything about this, I will lose the game automatically because of all of mine are in DEFCON 2. So I must address that. And I really screwed up. Well played, ma'am. I will play Uthent. It's a UN card. I will play it for the event. Deflate all your DEFCON tracks by one step. Okay. All right, what's next? Okay. Save one card for Aftermath. Okay. Then the World Opinion bonus. All right, so again, she takes the personal letter. She already has it. Gets to Prestige. Plus or minus one on her one of her death contracts. And nobody gets the extra Aftermath card, okay? Resolve agendas. Okay, go ahead. Flip yours. Okay. Escalate all DEF CON markers in the political DEF CON 2 area by one step. Je no, 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 no. Political, political only. Political, only one. Okay. okay. Dominating player receives prestige equal to difference in DEF CON steps plus one. One, two, three. Hold on. It would be three to me. Okay. So now, Italy. My feint didn't work. Uh, yeah, so dominating player. Prestige equal to the difference of the influence cubes plus one. So that's two plus one is three. So. Three and three. It's a wash. It doesn't move. So those go away. Okay. Then check for a nuclear war. We did not blow up the world. I was the only one that was close, but I did not. I was able to uh, not push the button. Advanced round marker. Okay, so we go in to the end of the game. Now we reveal the stack of strategy cards, save for the aftermath. There should be between six and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. The reason there could be nine is if anybody had done the alliances, which oh, I, met, I didn't mention this time, but we tied, so nobody gets it. Count all the influence cubes and ignore UN events. Whichever player placed which cards doesn't matter. Oh, the player with the highest influence gains to prestige, I misspoke earlier. So, one for the good guys. One doesn't matter. One doesn't matter. One for the bad guys. Two for the good guys. Three for the good guys. So that would be six to one. Two for me. All right, then, uh, assuming that no one triggered global nuclear war, the winner of 13 days is the player with the most prestige. In case of a tie, the player holding the personal letter wins the game. Victory! Yay! Dang it. <laughs> Whew! <laughs> the thing is, the, 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 the crazy thing here is, because of this, and I assumed that you had played Cuba, 
Because had you played Cuba, you win the game. Well, my thinking was that's what, what you would think. So right. that's why I wanted to do this one. I was really hoping that you would completely ignore, kind of ignore the death contracts, thinking that I wouldn't have anything over here. So you would focus that, but that didn't work. <laughs> I know that you know that I know that you know. We have been together almost 13 years now. Right. So, <laughs> so totally meta. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, why did she get two prestige for the UN? Shouldn't get that as it's only given out with the agenda. Uh, you know what? Uh, for the Wait, for the agenda. Oh, you're right. You know what? That should be there. He, he oh. makes a good point. We shouldn't have the two each time, but I actually oh, okay. gained two last time, which we shouldn't have done, so it ends up net one. Okay. In the end, I still end up victorious. So, thoughts on the game? I enjoy this game. It is... Like like Edward said, it's very meta. Once you've played it a couple of times, it's I know that you know that I know that you know that I know that, you know. And so that's definitely what makes it fun. On top of the fact that I just love card driven games and just I just I just like cards in general, so if you <laughs> add card you know, card driven games I'm going to enjoy. So I just I like the bluffing that you can do. Yep. I like the adding and removing cubes, the death contract. There's just so many things. There's a lot of stuff going on, but not not too much at oh, all. There, Everything yeah, yeah, that's yeah. going on is so small that it's not a big deal at all. And I like the fact that the death contract is you fighting against the game as well as you fighting against yourself as well as fighting against the other player because how hard do I push? You have to mitigate this, which I do normally a really, really poor job of. Uh, and so I barely, barely was able to mitigate it here yes. because if that's up one more, then I yes. automatically lose the game. Uh, yeah, just really, really well implemented, really clever uh, job of just condensing down Twilight Struggle into this really tight, neat, super approachable package. Yep. So well done to Oscar and Daniel and to uh, Jolly Rogers and uh, and uh, Ultra Pro yeah. for publishing it. So yeah, and that's it was thirteen days. Really cool to have the sleeves come with the game too from Ultra Pro. It did, uh, which is nice because yeah. um, if you're shuffling cards and doing stuff like that, and as you do mm -hmm. in CDGs, uh, they get worn out. Yep. So this is definitely. Definitely uh, nice to have. So, yeah, yeah thanks for uh, thanks for joining us for this. And Amanda, thank you for being willing to do this of today. Course. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you like the video down below. Don't forget to subscribe. You can set the alarm uh, with the little bell uh, over there that uh, lets you know whenever we go live. Also, if you enjoy what we're doing this weekend, this is uh, going to be our ninth live stream of the weekend. We have two more coming up later on here shortly, actually today. If you like what we do and you want to support us on Patreon, we would definitely appreciate it. Patreon.com forward slash heavy cardboard. Other than that, yeah, go check out the library. We're up to almost 30 videos so far in the first five weeks. And yeah, definitely appreciate all the support y'all have given us. So thanks a lot for yes. watching y'all. And we'll catch you guys uh, here momentarily once we get the next game set up. Yeah, yeah? cool. Catch y'all later. Bye. Say bye.